Hi, I'm Simon from Anaphylaxis UK. Listen, before the video starts, can I just ask you, please do us a favour, subscribe to this channel. It helps us out a great deal. If you like the video, and I'm sure you will, hit the thumbs up and ring that bell. Do all the good stuff. It helps us out so much. I'm really grateful if you can now, do Hannah, that. I wanted to ask you about allergy tests. So are yeah. they any good? Is it worth doing when you see them in pharmacists on the high street, you know, and people can do those at home? Are they reliable? Do they tell you a lot? Is it worth doing at all? Yeah, there are lots of different allergy tests and some of them are really useful. And even some of the ones that you can purchase on the high street are validated forms of allergy tests that are recognised um, by the British Society of Allergy. But those are the ones that you'd be needing to look. Are they checking the IgE? That's the immunoglobulin E cell, which is the one that's involved with some forms of allergy. Many of the allergy tests on the high street might be saying that they're doing a hair analysis, um, kinesiology, where you're like holding an electric bar, or sometimes they're doing a blood sample where they're checking the IgG, which is a type of immune cell, immunoglobulin G, but is not recognized as a way of diagnosing allergy. It's the IgE ones that we're looking at. But there are issues with you just going along to the high street and purchasing even an IgE one um, without any history to go with that. And the issues are, are sort of twofold. One, very occasionally, somebody has a very clear history of an allergic reaction, particularly to foods like sesame, strangely, where they say to you, every time I eat sesame, I get hive, swelling, vomiting, possibly anaphylaxis, and you do a blood test and it's negative. Now, if that person hasn't had any advice with that, they're gonna go, oh, well, I'm definitely not allergic and potentially keep exposing themselves and putting themselves at very high risk of an issue. So it really, you know, a negative test doesn't always mean you're not allergic. On the other end of the spectrum and much more commonly, positive tests definitely do not mean you're absolutely allergic. And so really, you should always see somebody who knows what they're doing when they're thinking about ordering tests, who will find out from you what's the story you're describing. Does this fit with an IgE allergy, which is the ones that tend to produce immediate symptoms, so very classical symptoms. And then we would then test around those things that you've said you're concerned about. If we just randomly screen and test every food we possibly could, there's a good chance, for, particularly for children with eczema, that you'll get lots of false positive tests. And if that child was eating that food and hadn't had any history of reacting, and then you now take all the foods out, usually because you think it's gonna cure the eczema, which it absolutely won't, you then risk that they'll lose all tolerance to the food and become allergic. So it's really, really important that allergy tests are done in conjunction with taking a good history and saying, this is what we should look for, and these are the tests we're going to do. So you said there that sometimes a test would say that they are positive, that they have got an allergy, when actually they haven't. Is that because they might be faulty? They're just inaccurate. What's the um, what would you? Why would that? Why would it be give it a positive when it actually isn't right? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, no test is a hundred percent specific and sensitive, so that means you know accurate basically. And um, what it is picking up, it is picking up that that person still has enough IgE, so enough of that immune cell to create a positive test result. So that person's body, for whatever reason, is recognizing this thing. So it usually food we're talking about, but it doesn't necessarily translate into actually producing an allergic response. So there's a real worry with those ones that say, for instance, they um, say to you, I love peanuts. I eat peanuts every day and nothing ever happens to me and you test their IgE and it comes back positive. So that body does recognize peanut, but if you then say, okay, take it out because of a positive test, then we'd really worry, well, it's already recognizing it. Are we gonna mean that that person will lose all their tolerance to that food? So it's a really dangerous thing to do. The other path that people fall into really commonly is they think, well, I'm really worried about my baby. I'm very worried about weaning, particularly if there's a family history of allergies or another child has allergies or because the child's got eczema and they're thinking what might be causing it. So they want an allergy test to check for everything before they start introducing the food. And so the things that can happen there are, the test may be negative because the body doesn't recognize it yet, but an allergic response can develop classically two or three times after exposure to the food, 
or we all know adults can be allergic. So you can actually become allergic at any point in your life. But again, more commonly, especially if you've got eczema, you can have all these positive tests that now as doctors, we're left in a quandary because we can't put them into context because your child's never eaten this food yet. And so what we end up going is, well, the test is positive. We don't really know whether they might react or not. They're only 50 to 60% accurate, but we say for safety, avoid it. And actually we know very clearly from evidence, if you avoid it, there's a good chance they will go on and become allergic to it. Whereas if you just wean very carefully and slowly with small amounts, a little bit each day, yes, they might have a reaction. Yes, anaphylaxis can occur. And having had a child with anaphylaxis myself, it's, it's extremely scary, but deaths have never been reported in a weaning child. And therefore it's a much safer thing to do to be trying your babies with these foods rather than just going, let's avoid it because there's a positive test. And then you get to teenage years where the risk now is much higher of anaphylaxis and death. And you're potentially putting your child through the risk of more harm rather than just trying it in the first place. So it sounds to me as though at best they're a waste of money and at worst they're putting somebody in danger <laughs> by being misleading or inaccurate or not. They definitely can put people in danger. There is a relevance to them. So I quite like them if you were um, had worried about environmental allergies. So you've got, I don't know, asthma that keeps being triggered or hay fever type symptoms and you want to know, are you allergic to your animals, your pollen? Then they can be quite useful. Very limited harm you could do with those because you can't avoid, you know, all house dust mite is pretty impossible in the UK, but it could give you a guide. But you still then need to follow up with the doctor or a health professional to say, you know, I'm getting these symptoms, how can I treat them? But the tests might then fit in with the information for that. But it's remembering that tests only check for IgE. And the other thing to say is that some GPs can order these themselves. So if you went and you were really concerned that your child had a cat allergy that you've got at home, you could ask the GP, is it possible to arrange a blood test for IgE to cat? And most GPs across the country could do that. And they would ask the pedi pediatric team to take the blood from the child, but they could be the ones who get the results back. But allergy skin prick tests, which give you immediate results, they tend to be reserved for specialist allergy clinics. So GPs can't do that, but they can ask for many blood tests. So I would speak to them first to see if this is needed rather than go across to high streets, unless you're getting some clear history and guidance from someone about what to do with it. 